Let's now move to the issue of climate change. The South African Science Service Centre for Climate Change and Adaptive Land Management, or SASCAL, is a joint initiative of Angola, Botswana, Namibia, South Africa and Zambia, as well as Germany, to respond to the challenges of global climate change. SASCAL has secured funding of 10 million euros from the German government. Now, South Africa has one of the largest carbon footprints on the continent, but countries in the Northern Hemisphere by far emit much more damaging chemicals. So why the interest in Southern Africa? To tell us more, we're joined in studio by Dr. Jane Olwak, who is uh, Saskol Executive Director. Good to have you, Jane. Thanks so much for coming in. Thank you. Good morning. So I'm going to start right up front by asking you about this uh, carbon tax bill that was signed now into law trying to limit the amount of carbon tax that South Africa produces for industries and companies. Uh, uh, did you see that? What is your take on that? I think it's very important that we prioritize climate change issues and then environmental issues, particularly if we want to grow the economy. So anything we can do, including the carbon tax, including anything else, I think will go a long way in us responding effectively to the impacts of of climate change. But of course, any law or any regulation is only um, determined by how it is implemented and how it is understood. So I mm -hmm. think it's important for it to be workshopped so people know what is happening next. And so that we can all plan and make sure that we really contribute to, to that. And this, of course, will require the partnership between government, between industry, between people themselves. Otherwise, I think every step we take is a step towards um, reduction of the greenhouse gases and making sure that we have effective mitigation and adaptation strategies. Yeah. Why, why the attention though on Southern Africa? I mean, if you look at the rest of the world, uh, let's just take America for instance. They, they don't seem to be taking it as seriously as we are. I mean, in, in terms of SASCO, Southern Africa is a very important key player. The reason being because, first of all, we've got a lot of technology, we are advanced in, in climate, in research, we have a lot of scientists. And also when it comes to rainfall, Southern Africa is a very dry region. Yeah. And also we believe that if we tackle Southern Africa and improve capacity and also make sure the scientists are actually networked with other scientists in, in other regions, then we can go a long way again in making sure that we have scientists of high caliber, of um, high understanding, but also uh, SASCO have got another organization in West Africa, and it is called WASCO, which looks af after the West African countries. Yeah. So there is also a big group of scientists in West Africa and also in, in Southern Africa. But I think important is for us to realize that right now climate change is no longer a localized issue, not even regional. So we need a globalized and regional approach to address these um, these issues and that's why partnerships like we have in SASCO with other countries and German really tries to understand and assess and monitor and share knowledge and technology for us to be able to improve our understanding and respond yeah. to climate change effectively. Well, I suppose that then answers the question why Germany is investing yes. so much into this and, uh, and, and, and working closely with the Southern African scientists and and, and everybody involved in this climate change issue. But let's talk about climate change and the different weather patterns that we've been seeing because this is something that's been exceptionally interesting to keep an eye on and yet at the same time, very deadly. Um, if we look at the major cyclones in Mozambique, torrential rains and flooding here in South Africa, um, are these odd weather patterns related to climate change? I can say yes. One of the projects that we funded together with uh, CSIR was looking at the regional climate change models. And it clearly predicted that as we go into the future, first of all, we know it's getting warmer, but also it's getting drier. And these uh, drastic, unexpected events are the common occurrence and the common prediction. So of course there are other issues that are responsible for those including land use and land cover change but climate change has got a good percentage in the contribution to these extreme events and of course we have also experienced droughts and water shortages and reduction in food yields and I can say yes confidently because the scientist has gone a long way in actually uh, dissociating or identifying the climatic change uh, attribution to the drastic events we see. So yes yeah. They're highly related to climate change. Yeah, and, and, and so many people talking to the fact of, hang on, this has to be 
w one of the warmest winters we've had. You know, I mean, if I, if I have to look at what I'm wearing, I'm actually in the middle of almost, I'm wearing a vest. And it's just bizarre that at this time, usually in the year, you know, we are sort of much, much colder than this. Again, and I know there's a debate because you will get people saying, this has got nothing to do with climate change. It's got to do with an El Nino or, or, or whatever the case may be. But, but is this a sign of climate change? And if it is a sign of climate change, what are the effects on the continent? Of course, the, the understanding of the climatic system is, is a bit complex. There are so many variables. But again, from where the science is coming from, all the IPCC reports, of course, that are written by very many scientists all over the world, keep on every other year saying what we see, there is almost 90% chance that it is because of climate change. Mm. So it is going to get worse. And, and of course, you know, it, it is warm now. And again, one of the other results that the model predicted that we funded through CSIR is that we are going to have short winters. We are going to have increase in warmer days in winter and reduction in cold days in winter, yeah. but also we are experiencing, and it is true, shifts in seasons whereby the winter is starting later. And of course, the implication of that on evaporation, on transpiration, on diseases like malaria is very, very big. So it, it is the new norm, I think, and we must not ignore it. And uh, the science has, science has been very clear for so many years, but I think we need good partnership uh, good um, decision makers to really come together with us and we tackle this issue. As I said before, and of course in South Africa now the big to topic is to grow the economy, but I am very sure and others are that we cannot grow the economy if we do not prioritize environmental issues yeah, because yeah. as you know we are spending money on water shortages, on droughts, on uh, relief aids in as far as the reduction in food yield is is concerned. So the economy is being impacted on already because we are spending money on these droughts yeah. and uh, the climatic events, which we should not if we mm -hmm. had uh, put in place measures. Talk, talking about spending money, let's get back to the investment of this, the, the, the research um, from uh, called Saskel. So this was um, between 2012 and 2017, um, the German grant of 23 million euros. Uh, was given to support um, research projects. That was the first phase. Now we're entering into the second phase. What is the focus going to be in the second phase? The, the second phase is very exciting. We have done a lot of consultations in the five SADA countries, and the communities have identified agriculture and food security, water resources, forest management, biodiversity, ecosystem health, and climate services as a cross-cutting issue. So we are going to spend that money doing research into, into those areas. But in addition to that, German has also committed about 3 million euros to start centers of excellence. We already announced one of those centers of excellence in, in Namibia, looking at integrated water resource management. After that, we'll move to other African countries. So it's research, it's service provision. And of course, I'm sure you also know that we have a network of automatic weather stations in the whole of SEDEC. And these provide near real-time data, and this is already being used to, to different purposes. So it's research. We have to keep on understanding climate change better, but more important, focusing on adaptive land management. How can we adapt our land into these um, new conditions that we are living with. Yeah. So yes, that, that is where we are at the Fantastic. moment. Well, very yeah. exciting. Good luck with all of this going forward. That was Dr. Jane Owa. She is uh, the Executive Director at SASCO, and that's the Southern African Science Service Center for Climate Change and Adaptive Land Management. They're entering into their second phase in research on climate change after securing funding of 10 million euros from the German Federal Ministry of Education and Research. That leads us up to 8 o'clock here on this Monday morning. Let's hand you over to Sakina for the news.